It's a rainy Monday morning and I'm back in the shop. Last week was a, uh, a holiday week, if you missed me, that's why. Um, I've been working on trying to get these doors um, flat. So uh, I came in, I, I uh, sanded a bit. Um, I knew that there was a, a low spot here and with this short um, sander, um, it would like go into it if that makes sense. So it wasn't getting a, a flat all the way across. I would get I would get a dip right there. So got down a two by four, or <laughs> European equivalent to it, and made a, made this. Uh, I took a another sander apart and got the got the clips, but uh, really very very simple. Just cut a profile um, on the miter saw actually, and uh, trimmed it down to the same size as this one on the table saw. Rounded off the corners on top so it'd be nice to handle, and it, it works really good. So it gives a nice uh, flat across there instead of having um, the tendency to, to dip into the into the corners, um, into the shallow spots. So um, if I was in America, I would go to uh, wherever and buy some dino di dino blocks. I think they're called. Um, there, uh, it's a special set of rubbery. Uh, sand sanding blocks that you get for auto body, but um, over here, this is the biggest uh, sanding block I could find. So, you know, I do like I do everything else. Make my own. Oh, another important feature on this, I should shouldn't skip over that is is this. Uh, I did put rubber on the bottom. It, it helps even out any any bumps. And uh, this I had gotten from the um, craft store. Well, it was a hardware store that has craft, and uh, you know it's, it's actually the same stuff that's that's on this one. So uh, I, I'm very happy with my new block. It's uh, it's flattening out things uh, much better than, than than having just the short one. All right, more hand sanding. Well, this is the end of the paintwork, and it's a good thing too. I uh, just ran out of paint as well. It's uh, good that those things coincide together. Um, yeah, long, long process. It's been uh, quite a learning curve. There's things I would do different from the beginning. Um, doing these doors, I, I, um, these are the straightest part on the car. I probably would have started with them to begin with. It's straight, it's simple. Um, when you block out, uh, when you're doing blocking on a straight or semi-straight surface, it makes a lot more sense than doing it on a curve. Anyway, uh, I am happy with the results. Uh, it all needs buffed really bad. There's some orange peel and spots and stuff, but uh, you know, I, I got the paint on the car. Uh, it's uh, really, really uh, interesting. Uh, the fact that I was able to do it at all in. Uh, uh, being over here in Europe uh, is is for me remarkable. You know, doing it <laughs> in your garage in the in the middle of Kansas that's uh, not a big deal. But uh, doing it over here, they have a different uh, uh, a different tradition, a different attitude towards cars. Being able to do this here is is uh, I, I'm proud of myself for the fact that I've gotten it done at all. <laughs>
I, I just rewatched the video of uh, when I had it all together and the door, door gaps pretty much set and drilling the holes to, to hold the, the fenders in at the bottom and uh, just to prove to myself that it worked at one point. So now I just need to get back to that point. I, I, I know that this is one of the, one of the issues that have frustrated uh, many uh, Austin Healy restorers over the years is, is trying to get the, the doors lined up and the fenders lined up and the door gap set and all that. But I would think that if I had it bolted in place before and I put it back in the same bolt holes that it would line up semi-correctly. Um, doesn't seem to be the case. So uh, I got some work to do there. Uh, I think I'm gonna move on to something else uh, and just take it as uh, the frustration level allows me. Uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of nice. It, it makes it feel like uh, it's a car again. It seems more solid uh, having it all on there. Um, but it, it needs it needs alignment it, <laughs> to get it to get it right. Anyway. Um, It'll come. I have to be patient with myself. It's good to have door handles, even if the door doesn't close yet. Look, I got the back carpet in. <laughs> well, kinda. Uh, now these are just, you know, fitting the pieces to make sure they fit and how much I'm gonna have to alter them. Um, for this back section, it's uh, kind of like roofing. You start at the bottom and uh, overlap as you wait, as you go up. Uh, there's a, a really good uh, uh, video online of uh, Matthew Rendell doing doing this. Um, so, you know, I've I've watched it, uh, learned from his mistakes, and uh, seen his process, and it looks pretty straightforward. So, uh, I'm gonna start with this bottom chunk that I have. Uh, clamped in place uh, and uh, glue it up a bit at a time and then uh, work my way up from there. There now, I've got the next bit of carpet glued in place. Um, there's uh, seams here, here, and over there. And what I've done, I've just left them long for now and haven't glued underneath them. And then I'll, I'll once it's glued in place, I know it's not going to move. So I'm gonna, Trim it off there so it lines up perfectly, and uh, it'll get, it'll get glued down. Um, the next big piece, we'll go back here. Um, there's quite a bit here. I'm not sure if I'm going to cut it off or I'm going to leave it in place or just leave a, a little bit of a seam like these fold up here. Um, but I think leaving this much um, is too much. All right, so the glue's set up overnight, uh, and it's nice and tight on the steel, so uh, I'm gonna go through, cut the seams, and, and for this back, I've decided, yeah, I gotta trim it down. Um, I, w I wanna leave about a half inch overlap from the bottom going up, so I'm gonna use uh, this piece of wood to, to give me that, because I can't really, doing it freehand, I can't really see where the, the corner is, but the, the wood gives me a nice, um, reference line. some 
trimming and fitting to, to get it to line up just right. So there you can see the seams. Um, they came out really good. Uh, nearly, it'll be nearly invisible when the uh, when the seats get put in place. I'm still, I still need to trim around here because this is too long, and there's a weather stripping that goes in there before the seat gets put in place. And we don't want the carpet in the way of that because it'll get wet and just soak in water. Um, I've also glued in the, the top here. Uh, see that? Glued in the top up here, and uh, now to start working my way down, getting it glued in place as I go. I've decided that I'm going to uh, trim this once I get down to the right position, but I want to get it glued into place, make sure I have plenty of material to cover everything. So this is the next piece of carpet I'm going to put in place. Um, it kind of goes over this wheel well area. Um, I just wanted to show you that this piece, this, uh, this panel, will go in right here and really cover up most of what's going on here. But um, the carpet does end up taking care of this area. Um, I think the hardest part is going to be finding where the, the holes go without getting it in place. It's a tricky situation. Anyway, I'll deal with that and then uh, start putting it all together. And there you go, we got the whole back carpet done. Um, what I need to do now is, well it needs vacuum, but we won't talk about that. Um, I need to put in the uh, weather stripping that goes around, uh, around here on both sides and uh, then the seats can go in place. Of course I haven't upholstered the back seats yet, but uh, that's a project for another day. If you like this video, click the like button below. If you want to come along on the ride as we complete this project, click the subscribe button. If you want to make sure Google reminds you every time there's a new video, click the alarm bell. Your support is very much appreciated.